So this particular section is 5.8 semi-log plots and exponential functions. And the main gist of this is I'm going to show you how to make a log scale and show you the difference between the two. And if I do an example of why using a semi-log plot is of use, uh, two reasons why it's of use, um, but they're of course highly related. So <clears throat> here's some data that is plotted on a semi-log plot. And what the heck is a semi-log plot? Well, semi means half, right? Like a semicircle, half of a circle, though technically that's half of a disc. But anyway, semicircle, semi-disc, means one of my axes, rather than both of my axes, is logarithmic. Okay, so notice how 0, 5, 10, 15. The space between 10 and 15 is five units, and that space is equal to the five units from five to 10, and it's equal to the five units between zero and five equal to the five units between 20 and 25. So each one of these units is equally spaced apart. But notice here, this distance, let's do this and make it more clear what I'm talking about. Um, let's change that color to red maybe. Okay, this distance from one to 10 is 10 units. But the same 10 units, I just copied and pasted, oops, I just changed its length accidentally, and I did it again, there. Oh, I'm grabbing the curvy thing. <laughs> well, anyway, this distance between the two blue dots is the same here, I just made some weird looking calipers, right? Um, that distance is 10 units, but if I drag that up here to be between the 10 and 100, that's no longer 10 units. What's 100 minus 10? That's now 90 units, correct? So here's 10 units, but then here's 90 units. And then guess what? This distance is 900 units, right? 1,000 minus 100 is 900 units. And the distance between 10,000 and 1,000 is 9,000 units. So this distance is 9,000 units here, but it's only 90, oh, excuse me, 90 units here. In fact, it's only nine units right here. So nine, then 90, then 900, then 9,000. Up here, it's what, nine times 10 to the ninth units difference, okay? So this, the, our, our units are not equally spaced. They are not equally spaced. Now, why would we do that? If you look at this data, the, these data points absolutely, without a doubt, look linear, correct? They are, in fact, linear. Let's take a look at it by just drawing a line from one point to the next. Let's go to this first point and draw the line that connects this point and the last one. And notice how it contains every single other point in between. These points have a linear relationship. If we do not look at the graph's axes, because this is semi-log and this is not, this is regular linear, notice log linear, so logarithmic versus linear, then this the relationship between these two variables, x and y, is not a linear relationship. It looks linear on semi-log paper. Why is that important? Well, why does the graph appear as a straight line? Well, what we've done is we've been compressed or changed the rate at which this grows such that it's growing exponentially. When an exponential function is plotted using a standard linear scale on a horizontal axis and a logarithmic scale on the vertical axis, its graph is a straight line. This type of paper is called log linear or semi-log plot. So the bottom line is, this log linear or semi-log plot of this line means that this data is in fact exponential. It happens and we're going to have that in our project. You're going to have to do this in your project. Graph, make axes that are semi-log plots. So here's an example problem. In 1965, Gordon Moore, you guys probably do not know who he is, but he was a founder of Intel. Him and I forget the other guy's name, Tall Scandinavian dude, um, but they founded Intel. They were big dogs. I don't even know if the one guy, Moore's not around anymore, I don't think, but um, he made this famous prediction that the number of transistors per integrated circuit would increase exponentially over time. Specifically, he said it would double every two years, and it followed that almost to the T. This became known as Moore's Law, and it seemed like it would not break, and only in recent years has it done so. So on the next page, this next picture, the data is growing, does it actually grow or double every two years? So this is a 
logarithmic plot, plot, and this is linear. So this is on a linear log, or, or technically it's log linear, log linear, or we call it semi-log. It's not perfectly linear, but it's pretty darn close to linear. If we do this line again, right, we'll go from here, and we'll go up to here. That's pretty close to linear, and for this many years, from 1970 to 19... 87 or so it was pretty darn linear and then we got slowed down for whatever reason the technology was advancing as quickly so it took a little longer to get where it needed to get to and then it, it's it's now surpassed that and is going faster and now slowing down again but overall it looks quite linear and from here down to 1970 so for most of my early lifetime right graduating college it was strictly linear and so what do they say here? Uh, the plot looks basically linear. And Gordon Moore said it, would, it, it can't continue forever. And he's right. It, it can't continue forever. Um, but who knows? There'll, there'll be some sort of limitations as we go. So a logarithmic logarithmic graph. The following graph shows a pro progression of events from the beginning of life on this planet to the present time. This type of graph extends what you learned about semi-log plots and previews, previews what you will learn about log-log plots in Chapter 7. So this is really about Chapter 7, where I have a logarithmic plot versus a logarithmic plot. And what does it mean if the relationship between these two things is linear on a log-log plot? And we'll talk about that in Chapter 7. Excuse me, Chapter 7. Hiccup. Hopefully then we'll continue. Um, so we can answer some of these questions. What type of scale is used on the vertical and horizontal axes? Logarithmic and logarithmic. How can we tell? Again, it's this spacing is not the same. If I go look at the spacing right here, the space between this number and this number here is what's 10 to the second was 100. And 10 to the, 10 to the second is 100 and 10 is 10. So we subtract that, that's 90. So this distance is 90. But when I go up here, that's 100 up to 1,000. This distance is 900. This distance is 9,000. This distance is 90,000. This distance is 900,000. So it's not consistent. Similarly, if we, can I do this? No, I can't do that. So those are my horizontal calipers, right? And then if I do it horizontally, I'm sorry, my vertical calipers. If I do the same thing horizontally, right? This distance from here to here, 10 to the 9th to 10 to the 8th is, it's easier if I go down to this end. This distance is 90, right? Because that's 10 squared is 100, and that's 10. So that distance is 90, yes. But if then I draw my calipers, I should have copied and pasted, right, dummy? All right, that was easier. So now my horizontal calipers, that's 90. But when I slide it over here, Supposedly that's 90, but this is the distance between 100 and 1,000. So this is really 900, and this is 9,000, and this is 900, excuse me, 90,000, this is 900,000. So those distances aren't consistent. If this is a span of 900,000, this is a span of 90, well, what the heck? According to this, visually, 900,000 is equivalent to 90. Well, it's not. It's a logarithmic scale, okay? Pick a point on the graph, identify its coordinates, and interpret the meaning of the coordinates. So they want to pick a point find the x and y and tell us that in time to the next event that interpret that me what that means versus time before before our present time which is closer to zero over here right and how much time has gone by and so what ends up happening is this this from here to here is a lot longer period than from here to there what is the order of magnitude difference between the start of life on Earth and the Cambrian, explo Cambrian explosion? Life, Cambrian. Life is uh, 10 to the 10 to the ninth or so, and the Cambrian explosion is 10 to the eighth, so one order of magnitude. Pick two other events and describe them relative to each other. So pick any two and talk about their orders of magnitude. Um, measured in time before present, measured in time to next event. Yep, order of magnitude. And so the order of magnitude in life in the Cambrian event here is just one order of magnitude. Okay? And that's kind of it for this section. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is let's look at um, 
this table of values, okay? So let's ignore this third column. So the first column is if x is equal to zero, y is equal to 500, okay? And I'm just gonna quick sketch this out. It's gonna be kind of ugly, but we're still gonna try to sketch this out, all right? So let's make a graph, a plot, two axes. Let's try to make them somewhat neat. And let's first plot this as on a linear, linear scale. So linear, linear. I don't really care what the units are. I just want to show you mechanically what's happening. So if I plot 0, 500, so 0 for x, 500 for y. Okay, so I don't know where that is. I have to figure out what my maximum value is. What's my maximum value? 1.03 times 10 to the 17th. So this is 1.03 times 10 to the 17th which is equal to this, one point, uh, I'm sorry, one, zero, three, but I have to have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. This number is the top of my graph, approximately, okay? Whatever the name is for that number. Now, imagine this. I'm just trying to figure out where to put this 500. Does 500 go here? Well, clearly not if this is whatever, 1.03 times 10 to the 17th, 500's not there. Well, let's figure it out. So let's cut this in half. So this distance, if this is a linear linear scale, this distance is supposed to be equivalent to this distance. Am I making sense? If I'm not, you should come to office hours and ask, right? Try to make this a little better here. I think it's more accurate to be there. So that's about half. Now, half of this number, meaning if I took this number and divided it by two, it's gonna be five, one, five, and it's still gonna have one, two, three, four, let me do this. One, it's still gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 zeros, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I cut this number in half again, so this is 5, 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right? If I cut that in half again, that means I'm taking this number and dividing it by 2, I get, let's ignore this and just say 250, just to make it easier. So this number becomes 250 plus those 15 zeros, right? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now let's cut that in half again. So this is 1, 2, 5. 1, 2, nine. I don't have 15 anymore. Uh, I do have 15 still. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now if I take this and divide it in half, it's going to be 60, 62 and a half, right? So this becomes 62 and a half. But now I have 14 zeros at the end instead of 15, right? Because this was lined up like that. Are we anywhere near 500? Because that's half that distance. If I cut this in half, this is 3, 1, 2, 5. So now I have 13 zeros after here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, right? So we're talking about this number, and 500 is looking like that in comparison. I would have to cut this in half a whole boatload of times. So in half again, a half again, half again. In essence, I'm, I'm graphing 0, 500 right here. Maybe I'll choose a different color. Maybe the screen in purple. Hopefully that's easier to see. I don't know. Maybe I choose white. Yeah, that white is easier to see. So that's my first point. Now, if I'm trying to plot 5, let's look at the x-axis. It goes up to 30. So if this is 30 over here, then this is 15 over here. I'm just going linear, right? This is five, and this is, eh, that's not very good. And this is 10, let's say. And then this is 20, and this is 25. Close enough? So now if I'm plotting the value for five, that's five, and then it's 121,500. Well, guess what? It's nowhere even near this mark. It's way to heck down here. It's essentially on that line still because I can't discern the difference. If I plot 0.10, that's 29 million. But look at this. 29 million compared to this number even is only 29 million, those six zeros. So I'm nowhere near. I'm still pretty much on that line. Am I making sense? 
So first, first three points are pretty much on the line. Now, 7.17 times 10 to the 9th. But up here, this was times 10 to the 17th still. I'm sorry, 10 to the 16th. It was 5.15 times 10 to the 16th. So I'm still pretty much on that line. Maybe I'm just kind of sitting on it. Maybe I'm just sitting on top of it, but I'm not divided it up yet because look at this one. This number that's right here is still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. This is still, uh, this is probably 6 point, I might be a little wrong, 6.625 times 10 to the 15th. It's just still too gigantic. Not until I get to here, this 14th, am I even this high off the x-axis? And then this last point's at 17, it's up here. So if I completed my graph, I know I got all this noise, this orange noise up here, but it looks like this. It starts to curve up right here and then does this thing. It looks like that. So the problem with it is I cannot figure out what the heck is going on right down here. Right? It's really difficult to understand what's happening. I just know that this number is really, really a whole huge difference greater than these. Now, in comparison, let's look at a log log, excuse me, a semi log plot. So if I'm drawing a semi log plot, I can do the following. Well, I can do the following better, right? So instead of this number being my max and halfway is that number divided by two, we're going to go in. Um, uh, logarithmic scale. So we're gonna we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change these numbers by taking the logarithm of them. Now in semi-log plot, we could use any power that we want, any base that we want. But typically in the old days, you could buy semi-log paper. I just read an article about the coronavirus, and they were talking about exponential growth, of course, because if you watch any of the news, this is all growing exponentially. Pay attention. You can learn some of the math or understand some of the math if you just watch the news at this point. Um, but there was a guy writing the article, and he goes, hey, remember when we used to plot on semi log paper? Ooh. And he was lamenting that. But here it is right in front of us, real life. So how do we, how do we convert these numbers? Well, we turn them into powers. We turn them into take the logarithm of each number and turn them into log base 10 exponents. So in other words, log of 500 is equal to 2.699. Why is that? Remember, log 100 is asking the question, what exponent must I raise on this 10 to make it 100? Well, 2. Log base 10 of 1,000. What exponent must I raise on this 10 to make it 1,000? Well, that's 3. So log 500 is in between these two values, which means its logarithm will be, or this value will be somewhere between two and three. Well, in fact, it's 2.699. How do we get that? Well, we could do it manually, but it would be painful. It's more, it's more likely that we would just take a calculator and type in log 500 and get 2.699. Now, I used to give this as a test question. I would give this, this, and I would give this, and I would not give them that, and I would ask them to plot this, and they had to know. And most students messed this up, and I don't understand it's not that painful. There was just a lack of understanding, so I'm trying to get that to you now. If I want to change this to semi-log plot, I take the y value, the output, and I take the logarithm base 10 of those numbers. So log of 500 is 2.699. Log base 10 of 121,500 is 5.085. Logarithm of 29 million is 7.47. The logarithm of 1.03 times 10 to the 17th is 17. Well, that's pretty close to this logarithm, right? 17. This is pretty close to 14, but since it's above 1, it's going to be 14 and change. This is going to be 12 plus the logarithm of whatever that is. Okay? And you can just put this into your calculator and figure all that out. This one's going to be much closer to 10 because it's 9 and a whole bunch more closer to the, the next number. So it's 9.856. All right? So, and, and this one's not as easy to see, but watch the, how, how many decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2.9 times 10 to the 7th. Well, that turns out to be 7.47.
And so we end up plotting this. Our points now become 0, 0,2699. So if we're going all the way up to 17, let's just make this 20. This will be 10. This will be 15. And this will be 5. My scale is not great, but it's not too bad. This is 30. This is 15. This is 5. This is 10. This is 20. And this is 25. So 5, 0. 2.69, 0 and 2.69 is somewhere around, let's go back to white, 2.69 is here. 5 and 5.085 is pretty much at 5 comma 5, right? And then 10 is at 7.47, so that's about here. And 15 is at 9.856, so that's pretty close to 10, so it's just under there like that. 20 is at 12.241. 20 is at 12.241, so that's probably about here-ish. And 25 is at 14,627, so that's just below the 15, so something like this. And 30 is about 17, so that's uh, two-thirds of the way, or two-fifths of the way up. 17, so it's two-fifths of the way up, so it's something like that. Now notice, if I draw a line from this point over to this one, we get a pretty linear relationship. I'm sure the fact that it's not perfectly linear is because I'm hand drawing my scales and plotting them kind of haphazardly, right? This is not precision work, and look, it looks pretty darn linear, right? So um, that's what happens. In our project, you're going to be given data, and you have to determine whether the relationship between the data points are linear or not. You can sort that out. You've done that a number of times. You can also do a line of best fit to confirm. If you want to determine if data is exponential, you can plot it on a semi-log plot. And then if your relationship is strongly linear, boom, you have your um, exponential relationship. Okay? So that's what this section's about.